Hello, my name is Ian Shepherd. I'm a mastering engineer and producer, and I run a website called Production Advice. And this video is to answer a question that came in from a guy called Brendan, who has read the ebook on mastering with multiband compression that I released recently. Uh, and he's trying to use the, the guidelines in there to match the sound of a track that he's working on with a commercial release. And he's finding it tricky. Specifically, he says, from one minute onwards, it's a commercial club trap which has been played by DJs at the moment. I know it's extremely hot. The RMS gets up to minus three dBs and it has a dynamic range of 2.7. So I know this is ridiculously overcompressed. However, the drums sound nice and clear and punchy. All the bass is nice and present and it has a great energy. Even if I compress my mix to these levels, it just lacks that in-your-face attitude. Is there something I'm missing? So let's start by taking a listen to the track that Brendan is working on. And then let's listen to the commercial release that he's talking about. So the first thing we notice is, wow, yes, it's a lot louder. But I think the next thing that I want to say, I've got three parts really to my answer to, to Brendan's question. The first thing I want to say is that doesn't sound clean to me. There's so much high frequency energy going on with all of those synths in there that the distortion that's there in the in the kick and the snare especially is mostly hidden. Um, but if we listen to that snare fill just uh, at the end here somewhere. <laughs> That's heavily distorted and the kick drum in general, if you soloed out the, the kick drum in that track, I pretty much guarantee there would be a real kind of fuzzy, crunchy analog distortion over that. But it doesn't sound disastrously bad. Uh, and if your goal is to get tracks that loud, that's what you want to do. So let's uh, let's look at this in a bit more detail. The first thing I noticed when I turned the commercial track down to get a fairer comparison between the gains is the difference in the EQ. So I've, I've turned that track down by about 3 dBs. Let's listen to that. So they both have a similar RMS level over here now. That's the thicker green bars in the outside of the dynamic range meter. And now that the loudness difference isn't such a big factor, I think you can hear that there's a lot more top in the commercial release track. So let's try putting some EQ in to make Brendan's track sound more like that. And I'm going to try a low shelf to reduce the EQ so that we don't push his up into clipping. Those sound a bit closer now, and the first thing I notice is that I can actually turn Brendan's track up slightly because reducing that bass has taken away from the the apparent level of the song. So let's increase the gain on there a little bit. Let's try 3 dBs. They're already closer, but that's clipping a little bit. So I'm going to put in a limiter on the output here just to stop any clipping distortion. There's 
there's more thump in the bass on the commercial track so i'm gonna try and lift out the kick drum uh, a little bit on brendan's track So that bit's sounding a bit closer there. Uh, now let's turn the commercial track back up and put in another 3 dBs on Brendan's track to get it up to that kind of commercial release level. Now, I, I'm saying commercial release level. That's the commercial release level for this song. In my opinion, it's way too loud. It would sound much better if the levels were lower down, closer to what Brendan is doing. Um, because when it gets played out in the world on the radio, on an MP3 player, on somebody's hi-fi the levels are going to be even and the more dynamic track is going to sound better but this is all about asking the question of how we get those high levels so let's try this now Now, Brendan's track now has a dynamic range that's less than the release track, but it still doesn't have quite the same bite and quite the same edge. Uh, and I think part of that is that the limiter is softening what's happening a bit. So I'm going to switch on some multiband compression. And one thing I should say is Brendan's question was he was using the, the guidelines that I have in my ebook. Those are aimed at my goal in mastering, which is transparency, which is processing that you can't hear. The song just sounds better. We can't use those kind of restrained settings if this kind of loudness is our goal. So I've cranked the ratios up to four to one on the multiband here. I've raised the threshold and I'm pushing the level on this much harder. So let's just see how that sounds. So that sounds a bit better. Uh, there's a little bit more thump in the kick there, and I can see a little bit more dynamic range over here. It still doesn't quite have that bite and that attack that the commercially released tune has. And one reason for that is that there is some distortion in there. The, the version I've got now of Brendan's track is still quite clean. And if you want that kind of edge and that really aggressive in your face sound, then actually a little bit of distortion is going to help you out. So I'm going to use the saturation setting on the Melda Productions limiter that I'm using. I'm going to try just affecting the top 3 dBs of the signal. And let's wind that in and see how it sounds. <laughs> And it's kind of subtle but i think you can start to hear some of that gritty edge coming into the claps and the bottom end of the kick drum now let's try comparing those two again see how we're doing So that's a lot closer. Let's just remind ourselves how the track sounded before. Here it is again with the processing. And it might be interesting to actually look at the frequency response differences between those two. Here's the original. And you can see there's a lot more low bass energy in that. So 
high frequencies and the upper mids are cutting through much more there. Now the question is, should we do that much processing to this original tune to get it to sound like this one? If that's your goal, that's what you should do. I feel there are too many compromises. We've added too much distortion to this. We've taken away too much of the dynamic range. And let's just let the commercial tune run for a little bit. It goes even further. It goes beyond what we've done for Brendan's track. And that brings me on to the final idea that I want to talk about in this video, which is, it's not an idea that I invented, but it's a very useful concept to think about, and that is loudness potential. If you want to make a track really loud, you need to set out with that goal in mind and carry it all the way through the production process. This tune here sounds so loud because it's got those distorted kick and snare parts, because it's got all that high frequency content in those synth sounds, those sustained synth lines. The key point I'm saying is the commercially released track that we've been looking at here has far more potential to sound loud than the original song that Brendan has. And you need to bear that in mind when you're deciding how you're going to process a tune and what it should sound like. So there you go. I hope that was interesting. Let's just recap the points I made there. The first thing that needed adjusting on that track was the EQ balance. You need an e a balanced EQ going in. The next point was you need to get rid of those tasteful rules of thumb that I often suggest. You need more aggressive compression ratios, higher thresholds, more limiting, and bring in probably some kind of soft clipping or saturation type effect to help keep that punch because pure limiting will just soften the impact of the beats too much. And then finally, you need to consider the loudness potential of the song that you're working on. A really musically dense track like that commercial release has great loudness potential. Something more sparse and open like the track that Brendan was working on Maybe not. Maybe it's not appropriate. And finally, I would say again, both of these versions, when they came out on radio, on MP3 player, on somebody's CD player, will be played at the same level. And therefore, the more dynamic track will sound better. And I'll add some links in the post underneath this video uh, if you're interested in finding out more about that concept, because it's actually an opportunity for you to take advantage of the Loudness Wars master your songs with more dynamics and get them sounding better than commercial releases that have been pushed really hard like this one. Okay, thanks for watching. My name's Ian Shepard. Uh, come over to Production Advice and have a look at some of the other information I've got there for you.